So there I was, damn near my 11th hour in the work. I had just sacrificed my last two Saturdays, so I literally only had one day off um, over the past couple weeks. And I was spent, man. I was literally spent. I was, you ever get to the verge where you get so frustrated inside you, just feels like it's dying. Like, like you could be fucking bravo manly and shit, but you get to a point where you, you're damn near tearing, not, not out of sadness, but out of frustration and out of pain. And so I was at that point. I was at the point where I was just, I literally could not see further than than what was in front of me at that time meaning i didn't care about the future i didn't care about the repercussions of my next actions and i got to a point where i was just like you know what dude this this shit ain't for me man i'm done i'm fucking done don't nobody talk to me i i literally walked i didn't even clock out i, I didn't even log out i didn't even turn my computer off i didn't lock my computer right like i just i just walked out and i bounced didn't even tell my manager i was just done and, you know, I got to this point because, I mean, I'm, I'm going to tell you the realness. The, the reason why I got to this point was because I felt like I just kept doing the same cycle over and over and over. And and even though I saw results being being received by those who I believed at the time were not as skilled as me, not as hungry as I was, not as seasoned as I was. I felt that they were getting more results and, and better outcomes than I was, and I was putting my all in, and man, I was just, you know you know how that feels? Have you ever been there? Well, what happened, and I'm going to tell you what, what I did to turn that around, because I, at this point, I was getting so upset because people kept ghosting me, you know, like I was, I was going through the process up until pitch, made the presentation, they even told me everything sounded good. They even seemed like they were excited. And and even though I could hear the slightest tone of interest and sincerity from them, no matter what I did, it just seemed like they would disappear. They would no longer answer the phone. They would no longer reply to the emails. And what this did was just send me on this ongoing uh, process of chasing and leaving un unleft messages. And what I had found was that this started lingering to my other messages because I was so upset every time I had to give a call back and follow up that it reminded me because I was looking at the conversation log of these leads like, man, I did so good for this person. I could literally change their life. I could provide so much positive value to this person. And look, my, the conversation log or the notes in this file shows that I've left literally seven messages already with no answers. What am I doing wrong? And so I'm going to tell you this one little switch that I made that literally changed the course of, uh, of, of not only my attitude, but it also created this, uh, this huge response like this. It was like an unlock, man. Like, have you ever, like, you know, have you ever carried like a heavy backpack or heavy bag for a minute and then you, you put it down? You're just like, oh my God, woo! <laughs> like, you just, you, li you lift off all this weight and it just feels like you can move faster. It feels like you're just more free. It feels like, you know, you don't got to worry about it no more. Maybe you felt that way after you passed the end of MLS test, right? Because you have that, that anxiety of like, man, I better not fail, bro. Because it's going to be 30 days until I get it. I don't want to go back to that CSR position. I just want to graduate. And so I, I'm sure you probably felt that way before. But I want to tell you how to get that feeling, that rush, that, that feeling of like, man, how come no one taught me this shortcut before? I'm going to give you that answer in this episode. So stick around. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel, and I'm your host. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you one technique that I discovered at a, a real low in my in my sales career, at a point where I was just about to give up. I was literally contemplating leaving the industry and going to go work for for some other type of sales environment. And man, am I so glad that I had the resilience and that I had the mindset to stick it out just one more day. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't have discovered this one technique. And I'm going to share with you how I learned it too. So as I just mentioned, you know, I can't, I got to a point where I was literally putting in all the time. I wasn't doing anything wrong. I was putting in the hard work. I was reading my, my sales books. I was, you know, I was paying attention to the top performers in the industry. 
or at least in my sales floor, right? And I, I believe that I was doing everything right. I was I was doing the follow-up calls, I was doing outbound calls, and man, I was good on the phone. You know, I still am good on the phone. And you know, I I I, I had this gift, I wanna say, because a lot of people struggled with it on uh, getting outbound sales. And and why this was a gift, in my opinion, is because a lot of sales uh, agents relied on inbound sales. They relied on in, in, inbound inquiries. Now, while I could still you know originate inbound inquiries, I had this distinct feature of being able to solicit outbound. So I had this knack with uh, creating trust and loyalty with complete strangers, the people who were not in the market, and uh, and it was just my wordplay. It was the way that I presented the message and kind of like this, um, you know, this this real uh, covert way of of persuading and influencing. And now I'm giving that information away for free. So if you'd like to know about that sales script, I got an inbound, outbound sales script that will blow your mind. And I'm giving it away for free for you for watching this video. So go to salesremaster.com or click the link below this video. At the bottom of the homepage, you can request a copy of that free sales script. But going back to the situation at hand, the reason why this is important is because I'm noticing, you know, it's it, it's funny life, man. It, it, you know, they, they call it the circle of life and it's because what you, are going through right now, there will be a point, whether it's a year from now, two years, five years, or 10 years from now, you're going to look back at it and be like, man, I remember when I was going through that. <laughs> you ever do that? I do that a lot now, because I'm a little bit older, you know, I'm 37 years old, I got kids now, so I get to see it through my kids, I get to see it through people just barely coming in the industry, and I get to see what they're going through. And it's really interesting because it really is a cycle, and I'm noticing it more so now because everyone has this belief that the market is bad. Everyone has this belief that no matter where they where they work, it's greener on the other side, or that people just want to know about the price and the free services. And so when I got to this point, right, in my career that I see a lot of sales agents going through, not just in my own company, but through other companies as well, because I get hit up a lot through, the, through my direct messages, my private messages on all social media platforms. And the, the odd thing is that the most common uh, issue or, the tr or problem that, that, that a lot of LOs face are, are really all circle around the same thing. And I'm gonna hopefully share with you a solution that's going to help you avoid that same thing so that you can find the unlock and help yourself climb to that next level. But more importantly, figure out that, man, the answer's been there this entire time. And so going back to my example, when I got to this low and I literally was thinking about quitting, I stormed out, right? And I ended up calling a good friend of mine who uh, went into, you know, I, I met back up with him when the market died, I went into executive recruiting. So I was like, uh, I was recruiting executive positions like HR, VPs and VP of operations. Like, like if you've ever heard of uh, uh, Jim Beam, like Jim Beam is, uh, you know, Jack Daniels, the alcohol, like they're the owner of Jack Daniels. Well, I, during, to give you an idea, I'm the one who connected Jim Beam with their uh, vice president of human resources and these base salaries are like two hundred forty thousand dollars So these are some you know some crazy cats they're like these are you know these people are decorated bro like they you know executive executive and so I was the headhunter for these executives but more importantly I had to sell not only the 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 uh, prospects which were the applicants but also the major corporations and hiring my company to give me the job to go find them that person and so I landed that and you know we, we got paid commission for being that middleman anyway long story short is when when I got out of that position I went back into real estate because I heard a lot of people were, were starting to get back in and so then I got back in and 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 long story short is when I was done I was fed up I uh, I called my, my buddy and I was like, hey man, how are things going? You know, and this guy this guy had already grown up. He he uh, you know he moved up the ranks. Actually went with a different uh, headhunter firm, and he was just killing it. You know, and I could see him all over social media, just happy. And I wanted to get there. You know, I just really wanted to get back to that successful position. So I hit him up and I was like, hey man, man, I'm burnt, bro. I'm done, man. I'm I, I'm thinking I might just come back, <laughs> right? Because when you get into a dark state of your mind you you're not thinking right you know it's instinct instinctively us as humans we're always looking for the path of least resistance but at the at, in the same breath we are also taught to avoid the path of least resistance we're also taught that 
if you want success, you have to grind for it, right? And and this is the funny thing because it, it kept me torn in between. It's like it's like I I wanted the rewards of the uber successful. I wanted the rewards of being in the top one percent income earners in the country. But at the same time, I was just burnt with doing the actions that are involved with earning yourself into that 1%. And so I, I came up to a point where in my mind, because I was in this negative state, I was like, you know what? I think I'll be fine with just being part of the 5%. <laughs> <laughs> you ever get there? You're like, you know what? Like point of settlement basically. And so I was just like, you know what, man? I think I'm okay with fuck 360 plus thousand, man. I'm okay with the 180. I'll make it work. <laughs> you know, so I was, so I was just trying to find different ways. And I'm like, man, but you know, I got kids and, and I got family and I'm like, dude, I don't want to go backwards. And, and you know, so I'm just caught in between. But what I do know is that I was just done. I was just done with doing the job. I was done with with uh with that hoorah attitude you know like i wasn't the go-getter motivator at that moment and uh you know so i was talking i was talking out to him and the funny thing is is that, that he was going through the same exact thing he's like bro i'm done too i'm spent and i'm all man you look like you're doing so good he's all hey bro like you know how it is and he's telling me he's all you know how it is man it, it's 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 a facade it's you know it's you you have this presence to um, to to give off this ambiance of success and he's all bro like we all do it at that you know when we're at our highest we're reflecting our success at the moment but when we're at our lowest we're reflecting our lowest at the moment and and he said that and it really caught a nerve because that wasn't even the message that he meant because what he was trying to say basically was, hey, bro, like, you know, it's all successful. You know, it's all fun and games. Like, I'm making good money, you know, but you don't want to come back, bro. I mean, it's still a grind over here. And what he, what his message meant was that no matter where you go, bro, it's going to be a grind. Like, what you're feeling right now is, is usual. Like, I'm feeling it. I'm at the top. He's all, he's all, you don't just feel it when you're at the bottom. And so that was his message to me. But what I ended up walking away with was that, man, that's so right. Like we, we mirror, we exude the energy that we feel within. Does that make sense? And so, and so then I started putting it together and I was like, bro, like how come, how come it felt like everything I was doing was, uh, was just not going anywhere. Like I wasn't getting the actions that I wanted and I was putting in the time, putting in the effort. And the problem with that is, is because I was exuding, I was displaying, I was, I was showing the, the, the intent that I had within and the intent that I had within was desperation. The intent that I had with, within was that I needed to make a sale because I'm frustrated. The, the, what I, the energy that I was displaying was frustration, anxiety, desperation. Does that make sense? Because I was already at my low. I unknowingly, unbeknownst to me, I was exuding this kind of fear through my tonality, through my body language, through, through the rhythm of my voice, through the way that I responded. And it got down to a point where I forgot the basics. And, and thank God he, you know, I had a chance to speak with him because sometimes when we go through the, the hustle and bustle of things, we forget the basics. And here's the basics is that is that you will get whatever it is you desire. You will get whatever it is that you believe that you deserve. And I wanna tell you that it really does come down to mindset. It comes down to what you believe that you are capable of. And when you get to this point of you not believing that you are entitled to get what you want, it's because you're only focused on yourself. When you put it more about the other person, being about the other person, you will discover that through the actions of actually wanting to serve, you don't, you no longer need to sell. Because if you're exuding this frustration or exuding this desperation, those people you, you are in contact with are actually the people you're supposed to serve and the people you're supposed to, to persuade to do business with you. But because you have this, this, uh, this selfish intention and this selfish energy about you, it comes off. And guess what that selfish intention comes off as? It comes off as a salesman. And so here's this one technique that I, that I just, that I learned and, and I, and I made this one little simple switch and it literally changed the results that I got. It was the fact that I stopped sounding like a salesman. 
So a salesman sounds too enthusiastic. A salesman sounds too fake. There's that fake rapport. Like, hey, how are the kids? I was asking questions that clearly stated that, that I was just making small talk. Right, and I was and I was talking to professional people as a set like salesmen, my prospects who actually qualified, who actually could do business with me. I was trying to too hard to sell them, and because these people are qualified, and these are the people that actually can qualify to earn my time for me to do business for them or to put time into uh, wanting to work with them. They are qualified, bro. So guess what? They get, they get approached by all kinds of salesmen and all kinds of salesmen sound too much alike. And so what I discovered was that when I stopped sounding like a desperate, hungry salesman, and I started sounding like what a professional would want to hear, which is something like a consultant, like a CPA, like a, a doctor. When you think about a CPA or a doctor, they don't, they don't talk to you enthusiastically. They're not sitting, you know, they're not trying to sell you. They're just, they're actually serving you. They're serving you with direct uh, uh, information that is going to ultimately help you. And guess what? They don't care if you don't use it or not because they're so confident in themselves that they already know what the right answers are. And so that is a switch. If you want to learn more about these, these techniques that enabled me to become the number one salesperson on my team, the techniques that allowed my students become the top five in their entire company, bro. Like they went from down here to up here to the top five, bro. Like if you want to know these techniques that enabled me to, to not only hustle alongside but lead the number one team in my company, the number one team, most fundings per agent, most funding average per agent, most funding as far as a team goes on a national broad scale. My company's national, bro. We got over 2,000 sales reps and I am fortunate enough to lead the number one team. You want to know the secrets and the maneuvers and the techniques and, and the habits of these top performers? Do you want to know a faster way to get to exactly where you want to go, go to salesremaster.com. There's a link below this video. Check out the course. It's called Formula to Six Figures. Bro, if you haven't invested money into yourself, how are you going to get to where you want to go? The best, the best way to spend money is to buy things that help you create more of it. The best way to spend your hard-earned money is in, is in tools that help you generate more to help you become more and become greater. Do that today for yourself and unlock whatever is holding you back. Salesremaster.com, check it out. Formula to six figures. Get it today and I'll see you inside, bye. Let me show you everything I know. A jungle slide.